In this video, I want to talk to you about utilizing diagrams. Now, there's a couple of things you need to see on setting these up, but I want you to know about this functionality because when it comes time to write transact SQL queries and stored procedures and those sorts of things, one of the big challenges you have quite often is figuring out just exactly where the data is, how the tables are related, and so forth. So I want to throw this in here early because you're probably going to see me jump out into these diagrams a bit during the course to try to explain why I'm doing some of the things that I'm doing with this code. So understand that to utilize diagrams, there is a functionality over here in the database. Notice here's AdventureWorks 2012, and if I expand it, you can see right here, Database Diagrams. Well, if I expand that, you're going to notice that it's telling me that uh, support objects cannot be installed. The database does not have a valid owner. And this will come up the first time you attach a database. And here's what we're going to do to fix that. We're going to right-click on our database, AdventureWorks 2012. We'll go down to Properties, left-click on that. And then we'll come up here. This is our database properties. We'll talk about these a little more later. But notice on files right here, there's no owner. So I'll just click right here. Click the little ellipsis button right over here. I'll browse, and I'm just going to grab my name, Server to Administrator. Say OK and OK. That gives us an owner. And now I will right-click and do a new database diagram. And then notice this time it says, you don't have one or more of your support objects. Do you want to create them? And I will say yes. And once that completes, I can now diagram. Now, I won't go through that ever again unless I detach the database, make changes, or that sort of thing. So what I want to show you here is, first of all, this is all the tables in the AdventureWorks 2012 database. So I'm going to go find the person database. I'll click it, and I'll click Add, or I could just double-click here on Person. But I'll click it and click Add. Notice in the background, it dropped that database onto here. And then notice this password is part of person as well. So I am going to add it. Let me do one more. Let's do phone number type. And let me go do address. Then I'll close that. Now, notice what this is going to show you is the tables that I dropped, OK? And notice between person and password, there is a relationship on that table. Now, right up here on the button bar, notice I can choose to fit, and that will put them all on the screen where I can see them. Or I can just drag, I just left clicked and dragged across these two. And then I can say selection, and that should have put those two on there. So notice I can now select only one table and move it around and it will keep me straight on my relationships. I can double-click the relationship. Notice things show up over here. I can right-click on that relationship line, go to Properties, and it will bring me to the properties over here if they're not there. And notice I can see exactly what relationships are on these. On the tables and column specifications, notice my primary key base table is Person. Our primary unique key column is Business Entity ID. So right here it is. The foreign key base, let me go back to here, expand that again. The foreign key base is password person. The foreign key column is business entity ID. So these are basically joined on these two columns right here. And I can notice how I can drag these around to help make me understand what's going on. Now, this is showing me the relationship. Notice this is also showing me, and I'm going to zoom up here to 100%, and then I'll just uh, scroll over a little bit. In the person table, I have a column called business entity ID, person type, name style. All that is out there, and I can see the names of the columns. But what if I want to see more than that? I can right-click on the table, choose table view, and then I can give it standard information. Notice this is showing me the column name right here, first name. This is also showing me the data type. Here's a suffix. In varchar, email promotion is an integer data type. Notice I can also click this and change the data type. Now I can actually do database design out here. I can right click here and create a new table out here in the database. And so I'll cancel that for now. The bottom line is there's a lot of power here. Let me just kind of go crazy for a minute. And let's just double click our way down through a lot of these tables. And I'll do entity person, country region, contact type, 
country region currency. And when all that's done, I'll close it. I will tell it to set that to fit. And notice how many tables I have drawn in this database that I can now start to see relationships between these. And I can really determine exactly how this database is built and how it's functioning. So this is the diagramming thing. Notice one more before I let you go. If I right click here, I can remove the table from the diagram or delete it from the database. I always want to make sure I remove it from the diagram. So that's a real quick look at diagramming. We'll come back to this later in a lot of different ways.